Well, why are you releasing them when uh, at first it was stipulated that they be held without bond? Well, it wasn't necessarily stipulated. It was my recommendation yesterday based on the facts that I knew about this case uh, as of uh, yesterday and late last evening uh, that they be held without bond. This morning uh, we discovered some additional facts and our investigation, of course, never doesn't cease with the arrest of someone, even though they were arrested, and I believe Mr. Stein turned himself in. Uh, we did learn some other uh, some other information, and based on that other information, we, uh, we've we been working every second of the day, the whole staff just about to uh, cover this other information, and based upon what we have learned uh, uh, additionally that we did not know last night, well, uh, it is now my recommendation that they be uh, released uh, with on their own personal recognizance. Mr. Stein is released to his attorney. How much trouble can it be to determine whether or not a man was in court in Dallas? Depending on the, the location of the people at this time uh, that were there that at that time and uh, the availability of these people, if we can, uh, it shouldn't be too very much trouble. There has been a little discrepancy on the times that the man was out of court, according to two different witnesses. I would like to finish uh, my, my uh, discussion here. Uh, are you saying that I can't present this discussion to the park board? You cannot go on the subject away from what we were talking about, and we were talking about the zoo charges. As far as the master plan is concerned, you'll have your chance to speak before the board and give any information you want to give, and you'll be welcome to do so. But at this meeting... Mr. Ringler, I was at the pre-council meeting, and there was no caveat by the city council limiting the discussion at this meeting. They asked us to handle the meeting and this was the parameters. You're that saying I we then cannot the discuss board. this admissions fee in context here today to the entire master plan at the We're zoo. We're not getting into the master plan. All right. Um, I've given you six minutes to speak, which I think is fair. I'll try to sum up very briefly now, I'll then. I'll give you 30 more seconds and that will conclude your presentation. Against the agreeable? backdrop of this week's newspaper articles, dealing with the emotion-laden topics of humane animal care and public safety, I wish to emphasize that priorities as set forth by the Park and Recreation Board. They are first to take away 68 acres from Forest Park, to put a four-lane highway through the middle of it, I thought you were fence in there. the remainder, institute a gate charge, and top the whole thing off with a monorail and above around the zoo. I don't think Mr. Nass, that we wanted admissions charge, I'm just through now. Or an enlarged zoo. I don't think we wanted an admissions charge or an enlarged zoo, which will give us a world of animal type of development in the city. You know Thank you very much. Well, I just called them the other night, and they didn't know what to say about it. They heard a lot of things, you know, that we weren't allowed to go home, and so now we're allowed to, and uh, look, it's like a living testimony. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, my name's Kana. And Kana, where are you going? I'm going to California. You think uh, that once you get home, you may not come back? No. Could you join another group of this sort and stay there? Yes, it's up to me. It's uh, my life, whatever I want to do with it, but... As far as the work that's serving God, I, I've never come across anything like this. It's the work of God.
This will be the scene tomorrow of the new Fourth Party Coalition Convention in Dallas for a four-day run to formulate plans for the 1972 elections. According to some of the party leaders, virtually every state in the union is represented with the exception of Alaska and Hawaii. Earlier today, I talked to two of those delegates. I talked to Donna Branch of Arizona and to C.T. Weber of California. Does it dampen your spirits at all that uh, national and well, local, even for that matter, politicians don't put much credibility to your movement? Yeah, I think in reality that uh, they put more credibility to it than a lot of people realize. Uh, they're really moving behind the scenes. Uh, they see the possibility of a, of a third party developing. Uh, you know, even the cartoons are coming out, you know, mentioning they better start parroting third party buttons. Uh, and they're doing that not only for Wallace, but, you know, like a great deal of talk about fourth party, even among prominent people who are inside the Democratic Party. Several prominent names have been mentioned in connection with the Fourth Party. Names such as Dr. Benjamin Spock, Gore Vidal, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, Ronald Dellums of California, and several others. However, none of them have committed themselves to be the candidate on the presidential or vice presidential ticket of the Fourth Party. Well, most local politicians and national politicians take a dim view of the Fourth Party. Some are taking a wait-and-see attitude but it should be interesting to see what comes from this convention. Gene McIntyre, the Electric Building in Fair Park for Channel 8 News on the Move. You know, uh, <clears throat> Ted Williams is under a five-year contract to manage. He's just finished his third year. No one thought that we could get him to manage uh, the first year, and then he was going to leave according to all the uh, best opinion someplace in the middle of the season, at the end of the first season, at the end of the second season, and there's no way that he would move with me to Arlington, Texas. He is my partner, he is my friend, and while I think that he would like someday to envision leaving the active field management to someone else, he will manage as long as it is necessary in order to get this team in its proper place and contention in the American League. I think it would be very important that he continue <clears throat> to do what he has done in the past three years, particularly in view of the fact that it's a new, new area, a new territory, and you couldn't, uh, you don't like to think of trying to teach someone this game, but if it is necessary to teach the game, you couldn't have a finer teacher in all of America than Ted Williams. Well, uh, they've got an excellent secondary. I don't know why teams have been passing uh, as effectively as uh, against them as they have so far this year because they've got uh, two fine cornerbacks uh, as good as there is in the game in uh, Herb Adderley and Mel Renfro. And I know because I used to run against them every day in practice. Uh, they've got a great secondary uh, in their safeties with uh, Cliff Harris and Charlie Waters and Cornell Green. And they've just got an excellent defensive secondary along with their front four and, uh, and linebackers. And I'm surprised the teams have moved the ball on them uh, as much as they have, although that still isn't as much as most defenses, but I guess when you compare it to their tremendous stretch run that they had during the last seven games of the year where they only allowed three points a game, perhaps when you compare it to that, uh, uh, they're not playing as well. But certainly uh, they can play when they have to, and they proved it today by shutting out Washington, and uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. Well, their offensive team is much more experienced, I think, overall in every position than their defense. They're a solid group. They've been with Farming for a long time together. Their defense was uh, a rebuilding program. It's been very successful. They have put in Elmendorf uh, from Texas A&M, uh, uh, Robinson at linebacker, a young blood in the end position, uh, and Olsen, young Olsen they got from Boston, who was out last year. These men have done an excellent job to blend in with the Deacon Jones, the Coy Bacon, the Merlin Olsen, and all the rest of their team. And they've done a fine job, no question about it.
think Fort Worth right now uh, has an uphill battle. Uh, I think it's because the board has basically uh, developed and operated uh, over the years uh, with an antiquated uh, philosophy uh, that simply says that uh, these institutions have, have to be located in rural areas. Uh, my feeling is the institution should be located uh, where the need is, where the people are, so it's convenient for the parents of the kids to get there to visit with their kids. Uh, I think the backup medically that we have uh, demonstrated we would have from the University of Texas at Arlington, from the University of Texas Medical School in Dallas, from the, uh, uh, the programs that the junior college have going here, their willingness to work with MH and MR to build a very good hospital uh, uh, with, uh, is very outstanding. And no other site uh, uh, that's being considered can offer that. I think that's very important. The tests are being conducted on Cooper Street on the southern edge of the University of Texas at Arlington campus. It's being done cooperatively by the Circle K organization of UTA, by the Key Clubs and Kiwanis Clubs of Arlington. We decided the best way to find out just how much pollution is in the air is to have our own WFAA TV mobile unit checked. The reading will be done on gauges like these, these four gauges, and let me explain them. This simply indicates that we have enough emission from the exhaust pipe to get a good reading. This is an inch in RPM gauge. This one tells us how much of our fuel is not being burned. And this one tells us whether or not our car is burning too rich a mixture. Jim Maxwell is the man who's doing the reading for us. Jim, will you tell me how our car came out? Jerry, you're doing real good. It should be under 400 parts per million and below 3%. You're running at approximately 0.3% and 75 parts per million, which is very good. So we are in good shape. We're in real good shape. In that case, we seem to be the exception rather than the rule. So far today, 250 cars have come through here for the free test. Eight out of 10 have been found to have hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide emitted from the exhaust pipe at dangerous levels. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, the University of Texas at Arlington. Check I, the last time Penn State was in Dallas, I believe you had a little something to do with a 13 to 13 tie. Jeannie, that is correct. Uh, my only claim to fame is I'm the guy that missed the extra point and lost the cotton ball game. Now, y'all are down here looking around. What do you look for? Well, we're down here primarily to check out the hotel situation. Uh, we're looking for a place to practice, and we're considering practicing right in the cotton ball. And uh, we. I have to look for laundry facilities. I've got to find somebody to do the laundry and, and, and so forth. You know. Does it feel look a little different from 1948? It sure does. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Okay, now, who do you want to play in the Cotton Bowl? Well, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, we're really looking forward uh, uh, to coming down. Uh, we consider it a privilege and, and an honor to compete against a Southwest Conference champion. Now, whether it's Arkansas or Texas, I don't think it makes that much difference, but I, I sort of lean towards Texas.
Several facts emerged as significant during the hearings this morning. First, fewer than 50 people showed up for the session. Considering all the controversy over the admission fee, one would have expected more community participation. Second, opinion among the speakers was not confined to opposition to the gate charge. Several persons took the opportunity to point out the need for the additional revenue to be gained. The Park Board opened the proceedings with a slide presentation of what were called deplorable conditions at the zoo. That prompted several citizens to question past park administration. I feel that many groups, as Ms. Randalls mentioned first, would have come out and educated the citizens of this community. For after all, citizens can only vote in an intelligent manner when they are properly informed. I wonder if it's possible to hold this bond election over. I hope so. But the preponderance of testimony today was in opposition to the zoo administration charge. And in several cases, that opposition was loud and angry. Another public hearing is scheduled for next Tuesday night, November 30th. Attendance at that night session is expected to pick up. Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
The second man they wanted was James I. Stein, also known as Jomo Tariq, a leader of the boycott against white businesses in Fort Worth and a loud critic of alleged police harassment and brutality against blacks. Early this morning, Tariq and his attorney turned up at the sheriff's office with a report that Tariq had been in court in Dallas at the time of the alleged shooting incident at Arlington. Tariq volunteered for a lie detector test to prove he had nothing to do with the shooting. Officers said tonight they will dismiss charges against Jomo Tariq. He is expected to have some comment on the matter by 10 o'clock news time tonight. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News, reporting. Well, our exact constituency, we don't know the size of it, but we do know that there are a lot of people out there who are unhappy with the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, and they don't exactly like what Wallace is offering either, and that's why we have formed a coalition, a national coalition of fourth parties for people who don't feel that they can be represented by either uh, any of those other three parties. What are some of the organizations represented in this coalition? Well, there's a number of organizations. There's the new parties in several states, including Texas here. There's the Peace and Freedom Party in several states. Uh, there's the D.C. Statehood Party, the Vermont Liberty Union, the Michigan Human Rights, uh, the Independent New Mexican, uh, the Montana New Reform, there's a great number of them. Uh, Kentucky People's Party, and I could go on. All together, mm -hmm. there's about 12 left parties involved. Uh, it took longer to put the paperwork together, and while we were putting the paperwork of the move together, uh, so as to get the commissioner's approval, and the American League approval, and the bank's approval, and all the people who had to have something to do with the mix, we kept getting letters, and Mr. Vandergriff and the mayor received, I think, five or six or seven hundred, and I received uh, two or three hundred, and an assortment of people, and the name that would go, in, in terms of all this correspondence, the name that was eight, nine to one over almost any other suggestion was Texas Rangers. So, uh, in effect, what we did was the people decided to have their own contest, and we selected the name that they had suggested, Texas Rangers. Now, what if I had been a contestant, if I would have been permitted to vote, I would have liked to vote that way myself. But I well, I think it was a tremendously satisfying win for us, uh, particularly in view of the fact that it gave us the division lead again, and also the only the third sweep of the 49ers in the last 22 years. So I think that uh, we did something today that uh, we should be very proud of, and I think particular tribute deserves to go to our defense, who made a lot of great plays for us. And uh, unfortunately, you only have a day or so to save it, and you've got to get ready for another one, particularly this week. And we're playing a, an excellent team. I know I've played with them before. And uh, I have a lot of respect for them, uh, not only as players, but as men. They've treated me uh, just great. And uh, I'll be looking forward very much to playing them again, and I sure hope we win. Well, uh, if you watch Jim Brown in all of his years of running football, he's the, the premier runner in our business uh, in the last decade, and he was a lazy runner. Uh, where he uh, looked for the holes to hit, he uh, walked very slowly to huddle, he came off the field very slow. And this is a characteristic of Thomas, and uh, I think Thomas is not maybe not running quite as good as he did last year at this time, but I still think he's doing a, a job for us.